the Powerful Content Podcast, your go-to source for content creation, strategy, and business inspiration. I'm your host, Mel Daniels, content strategist, coach, and speaker, empowering women across the globe to grow their business with powerful content that connects, nurtures, and converts. So if you're ready to create standout content that gets you noticed and remembered, or build an aligned audience who love you and are ready to buy from you, you're in the right place. I believe that content has the power to connect us all. It's up to you how you use it. Listen in for genuine and insightful chats with guests, as well as practical tools and strategies from me. It's so lovely to have you here. Let's dive into the show. Hello, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to episode 67 of the Powerful Content Podcast. Today, I have with me the amazing Bianca McKenzie. So Bianca is a certified elite ads manager with more than two decades marketing experience. She's here to help people help people. Her Facebook ad skills are beyond compare, (laughs) and it's so true too. She knows how to craft a strategy to get results and isn't afraid to dive into the numbers, the copy and creative to get what her clients hired her for. Not only does she know how to push the right buttons in Facebook Ads Manager, she's an experienced marketing strategist who will create a carefully crafted roadmap to get to your destination. She's a mum of a cheeky little girl and a sweet little boy as well. She has two beautiful fur babies and if her husband would let her, she'd have a menagerie of other animals too. But Thankfully, apparently he's the sensible one. She's super down to earth, as you will find out in this episode. And if you strike up a conversation about skiing, hiking, traveling, or Facebook ads, come prepared because she'll keep talking. And that's what we're going to do today. Welcome to the episode, Bianca. Thank you so much for having me. And I think I need to update that. That little boy isn't so sweet anymore. (laughs) (laughs) He's turned into a terror. (laughs) No, not really. He just can't sit still. Typical boy. (laughs) <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming on today to share your insights in this episode because I think it's so important to start thinking about ads long before you're ready. And I know that there's going to be lots of gold in our chat today. But before we dive into this, you've recently had so many changes and challenges in your life from a big move to Tassie to giving birth to that sweet little boy and now actually having a little bit more time to work on your business because your children are in daycare and school. I'd love to know how this has impacted your capacity to work on your business and what do you think might be in store for you this year? Oh, well, yes, I have a little bit more time again, which is great. It's interesting because I didn't really take much mat leave. I'm one of those people who can't sit still and I get ideas and then I want to do things. And you know what? When you have a little baby, they don't really move. They sleep a lot. (laughs) So I was often sitting here with a feeding pillow on my lap um, with the baby asleep (laughs) and me just doing things because that's just me. Um, But now that I have a little bit more time, yeah, things have changed a little bit. I don't know. Like I've been doing Facebook ads for nine years I think it's like hard to say it's like one of those things that sometimes I'm like I don't know Facebook ads are new and I'm like no no no, they're not (laughs) they've been around for quite a long time and I've been doing this for quite a long time um so yeah together with doing Facebook ads I'm actually also moving slightly back into traditional marketing space um I've just taken up a contractor mentoring role with one of the Tassie um government providers for business mentoring so I'm really excited about that so that's part of what I do um since moving to Tasmania I've started working with more Tasmanian businesses which is really Mm. cool it's like you know yeah working with the people in my backyard um in a way so it's still Facebook ads predominantly but also what goes with that so marketing foundations um funnels like because it's Facebook ads are not a standalone thing. It needs to all work. And yeah, when people come to me and say, I want to run Facebook ads, I have a really good look at their business and go, well, you're you're ready or you're not ready. And if they're not ready, I either work with them to get them ready or I send them somewhere else first. It's like, you need those things first. Hmm. So yeah, 
there's always a lot going on, but I have now three days to do that. <laughs> well, three short days, you know, school days are shorter, but um, yeah, it's really exciting. Yeah. And I, th- I think that a lot of my listeners will be able to really resonate with that, Bianca, you know, doing the school runs and getting work done within those school hours and the challenges those bring- that brings uh, to it as well. So thanks for sharing that. Now, I think that you touched on something really important just there, though, in that Facebook ads is not necessarily a standalone thing. We often think that Facebook ads uh, is going to be like the solution to our problems, whatever they may be, you, you know, whether you want more reach or more sales or, or all the things. We kind of think that, you know, we look at them in isolation, but it's really part of a bigger picture, isn't it? It really is part of a bigger picture. And the one, and I literally put up a post yesterday on my page, like Facebook ads in one word to me is amplification. Mm. Like it amplifies what what you can amplify, what you are already doing. And if you're not getting sales and if you're not, like not getting all the things that you actually want, you're just going to get more of that. <laughs> mm. So if you're not making sales, it can be because there is a traffic problem. It might be that you're not getting enough eyeballs on your work, um, which Facebook ads can help with. But if you are not converting that, then that is not a Facebook issue. Then that is, you know, a sales process issue or, you know, it might be your nurturing emails, it might be your sales page, it might be your sales team. So it's, yeah, it's it's a holistic, holistic kind of thing that Facebook ads cannot, I always say it cannot save your business. It can definitely make it explode if everything's already working. Mm. And and if there's one thing that I've learned from you, Bianca, over the years, and it is that amplification thing, that Facebook ads just amplifies exactly what's going on in your business now. So if you're, you know, your lead magnet isn't converting, then it's just going to amplify the fact that your lead magnet is not converting, isn't it? You're just wasting money on it. Yeah. (laughs) By sending more traffic to it. And of course, there's people that are going to drop off and there are like conversion benchmarks and things like that. You're like, nobody's going to convert 100% of you know the people that they drive to a page but if you're and this happens a lot with people that do launches and the first round of you know launches and the first round of Facebook ads often is just a data gathering exercise it's like it's market research if you send a thousand people to your page how many are going to convert and then if you send a thousand people through your funnel how many are going to convert and this is just how you look at it it's data and then once you've got that data you can improve on that like I just get really annoyed when people say Facebook ads don't work they work but your strategy needs to be right and but more importantly your foundations need to be right so get working on converting first like have everything working and then put money behind it and I'm not saying working from a like it's not broken kind of thing I'm working I mean converting like try to get people through it organically and sell to them yes organic traffic tends to sometimes convert better than ads traffic so you might see some changes there but if it's not selling already Facebook ads are not going to work it's not going to change it Yeah. So just quickly, Bianca, before we dive into the strategy behind Facebook ads and the strategy behind various elements of Facebook ads, you mentioned conversions there. So I would love to know, do you have any kind of benchmark conversion rates that people should be heading for or achieving before they put money behind them and use Facebook ads? Yeah, it's really tricky to sort of tell because everyone says something different Um, it also depends on the funnel so I work a lot with online course providers generally there's a conversion on a landing page for example when people sign up to like a free guide or a challenge or or a webinar or something like that so there's benchmarks for that some people say 25 percent some people say 30 percent I'm a high achiever I like to see 50 or higher (laughs) <laughs> oh, okay. Um, some industries, it is not possible. So you kind of have to go by your own benchmarks as well and test a few different lead magnets. Yeah, like I might be a high achiever, but yeah, some industries, it's just, it's just not possible. Like they are generally around the 25 to 30% conversion rate. Then there's the conversion on your sales 
where your sales funnel, so how much you sell, and that generally comes from a series of emails or a launch event. So like if you're doing a live webinar, that's your launch event. So you probably convert some people on that webinar, on that live event. Um, and then there's some sales emails and then there's your sales page. Your sales page is kind of like your salesperson that needs to do the converting um, unless you have that live event. So there's those two parts. Live conversions can be higher. Um, like I have a, an amazing client who gen- who generally converts like around 14 to 16%, which is quite good wow. on a live webinar for a just a sales page kind of conversion, the, I don't know, everyone says 3%, 1 to 3%. And when I look at data from other people, like I read other people's um, wrap-ups of their launches and things, and most of the times it's that standard 1 to 3%. Mm -hmm. So it is a bit of an industry benchmark. So this means that you need a lot of leads Mm -hmm. if you want to have, you know, everyone's like talking about six-figure launches and blah, blah, blah. It is glorified maths. You just need a lot of leads to be able to get to that. Obviously, you need to work out how much you can pay for a lead and like you get into all of that kind of thing. And that's the kind of work that I do as well. It's like, okay, how how much can we pay for a lead? What's our max? You have to know your conversion numbers before Mm. that. That's why I say that the first launch or the first few launches is, is a marketing research exercise. You might make money you might not make money um but then you know what you're working with and what you can improve on so yeah landing page conversions anywhere between sort of 25 to usually i've seen them up to 60 percent convert (laughs) and sometimes like a higher conversion like like a pdf download tends to get a higher conversion because it is quick people can get it right away whereas a webinar they often have to wait for Uh, it's more time investment on on their behalf but sometimes a a cheaper lead and a quicker lead is not necessarily a good lead Mm. so yeah (laughs) sorry I'm just adding to it ain't I (laughs) so much gold there I'm going to pull a few things out um, if I can uh, Bianca the first thing and I love this so much is use yourself as a benchmark whilst there are those benchmarks out there and typical average conversion rates It's always great to use yourself as a benchmark. And a lot of people come to me and ask about um, open rates for emails. And once again, I'm like, well, you know, there's the average amongst all averages for Australia. And, you know, you could say 20%, but use yourself as that benchmark and try and keep improving on that. And that's that's a great way to to look at it. So I love how you um, talk about conversions for your opt-in pages and your sales pages as being a benchmark to compete against yourself. Love that. Yeah. The second thing, the maths. And you are 100% right. It's all about the maths yeah. in terms of, you know, getting the number of people to these pages or to these uh, webinars so you can do the conversions at the rates that you typically convert at. So I think that a lot of people get a little bit you know, disappointed or upset in terms of sales that they they made from a live launch, as an example, but it is really coming back to the maths and, you know, the content that's driving those people to those, those pages. So that was the second thing that I love. And the third thing is that a cheap lead is not necessarily a great lead. And it's so true no. because we can attract all the people to our email list, can't we? And we can attract all the all the people to our world, to our community as followers, whatever it is. But unless they are the right people, they're never going to convert. And so they're never going to, um, you know, no. be one of those amazing conversion statistics. So awesome. I love that so much, Bianca. Thank you for that. Now, I think we went off on a little bit of a tangent, but let's bring it back to strategy. Let's bring it back to building that warm audience and finding those right people. So some time ago, I think it was almost a couple of years now, Bianca, that I actually came onto your podcast and spoke about the client journey. And my listeners will know that I love the client journey, which is taking your ideal client from knowing nothing about you all the way through to becoming a raving fan. So we can do this organically with our content, but what do you, what is your strategy or what tips can you give my listeners in terms of building that warm audience, finding the right people to bring into your world and then convert? Yeah. Well, basically just do everything like Mel says. (laughs) And then my strategy (laughs) is to amplify that with Mm -hmm. Facebook ads. And this is the thing, a lot of people, or maybe not a lot, I don't know, some people still use the old strategy. So, you know, five, six, seven, ten years ago, 
I don't know, since 10, was it around 10 years ago? I don't know. <laughs> I was around, I've been doing this for nine years, but yeah, let's say like six years ago, you would put up an ad and you would get people straight to your, your um, landing page and convert them to get on your list. You can still do this, but it is getting more expensive. It is getting more crowded. So Facebook ads, they're not the same anymore, especially after the whole kerfuffle with iOS changes, people open out, opting out. Tracking is really hard. People are just not as willing to give uh, give you their email address anymore because there are so many ads out there. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> realistically, there's like if you scroll through, scroll through your feed, I think it's every third post sometimes is an ad. Mm-hmm. So the way that works better at the moment is to put a little bit of advertising money behind your well-curated, strategically crafted organic content. So organic content is amazing because it allows you to really tell a story it allows you to be the authority become like become known as the expert and we're we're like we're creating all this content but then we just like put it out there and we kind of just wait and like of course we send traffic to it as much as we can but we we can really amplify that even further we can get that content that you spend so much time creating we can get that in front of people with some ads. And literally, I'm doing it at the moment. It's like I'm spending $2 a day just to send some ads to the posts I'm already putting up on Facebook, not on Instagram because like I kind of left that space a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, like on Facebook. So if you're putting up a post and you can send it to your blog post or something like that as well, I've done that, um, works really well here in Tassie. Um, but yeah, you can literally just spend $2 a day for a little while just to send people, especially to the type of content that creates engagement, to the type of content that in a way makes people want to respond and interact with the post and then layer that with content that position you as the expert. And then you can, like, there's a whole strategy behind it. <laughs> you can literally build upon that, like, and literally go, okay, well, the first 30 days that someone gets into my audience, I'm going to show them these posts and then I'm going to exclude them from that. And then the next, like the next 30 days, so 60 days, I'm going to show them this. Like, I mean, you are taking them on a journey. So they start with that beginning beginner you know when you just get someone into your network kind of content that you create and then you build on that and at some point they just know that if they want to go to you know they need someone for xyz it's like oh i know this person because i've been following them for so long even though technically they might not have been following you Mm. they've been seeing your ads so the ads that don't like look like ads. It's the ads that look like organic content. Mm, oh my goodness. I love that. Okay. So I've got a couple of questions, Bianca. Are you saying then that you use content, uh, organic content that has already been engaged with or has created a little bit of interest before you put money behind it? Or do you just choose which one and, and put the money behind it? A bit of both. Okay. So sometimes I create content that I just want people to see. It's like sometimes I think it's good. <laughs> so I just put some money behind it. But if you have content on your pages that people are already engaging with, you can literally, without boosting, don't boost, please don't boost. Without <laughs> boosting, you can go into Ads Manager and you can create a post into an ad. So, and it's really good because that it just keeps getting um, engagement. It keeps getting social interaction. You can um, retarget people with Facebook ads. Um, you can retarget people that have engaged with a post or with your page or something like that. So the more engagement, because Facebook and Instagram love engagement. That's you no, know, that's the main benchmark for them. They love engagement. Um, so the more engagement you get, like the bigger your retargeting audience becomes. And this is where another cool thing comes in because people then in a way are a warm audience because they've interacted with you. They are not as skeptical and they're not as hesitant to then give you their email address, which means your conversion rates goes up and your cost per lead tends to go down. Mm. So (laughs) win-win. Yeah, awesome. And so let's just talk about audiences for a sec a second as well, Bianca, just to clarify this, just to make sure that my listeners understand the difference. So there are cold audiences and there are warm audiences. So do you want to just quickly explain the difference? Yeah, well, it's cold, warm and hot. (laughs) 
oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, hot are the ones that are like your absolute total raving fans. So whatever you put out there, they'll buy it. <laughs> they, they are like, they don't need explanation. You know, whatever that person puts out, they buy it. Cold is basically anyone who has not had any interaction with your business or brand. Like they don't know you at all. Um, So those are the people that you can target in your Facebook ads. Obviously, there's like strategies around that as well, because not everyone is your target audience. And then your warm audiences are those who have had some interaction with you in a way, like they may have engaged in a post, they might be on your list, kind of that. They're warm, they know you a little bit, but they haven't converted to sales to you know, to buy anything. So, but yeah, cold audiences, not everyone is your ideal client. It's the same when you, like if you've been doing <laughs> any content creation or anything, any marketing for your business, you would know a little bit about doing audience research and, and you know, who your ideal, well, you should know who your ideal client is. Otherwise you should stay away from Facebook ads. <laughs> And then with Facebook, there's another cool thing that you can create lookalike audiences, which means that you feed Facebook the information about your warm audience, for example, by uploading your um, list. And then you tell Facebook, find me more of the same people that are already in my audience. So yeah, you can, there's so many options. <laughs> There is so many options and and I think that that's probably where a lot of people get confused as well. But if we take it back, take it back to that idea of taking them on a journey and, you know, that if you serve an ad to buy your thing and that person doesn't even know you, the likelihood is they're not going to actually buy it. I know. but if if you serve if you serve them other things first and, and you're taking them on a journey, then you're, they're more likely to buy at the end. So Facebook ads work in a similar way. Yeah, you well, if you use that strategy, then yeah. yes, it's like it is in a way amplifying that organic journey. It just speeds up the process because you don't have to sit and wait for someone to come across your content. In a way, it's like you can put it in front of them. <laughs> That's what I love about Facebook ads. It's like like the unsuspecting person. And can you know <laughs> like in google you have to search for something in facebook you can just be scrolling and go oh squirrel that's cool <laughs> i'm yeah. gonna follow that yeah and that's a really interesting um example as well i think bianca in terms of the intent isn't it so yeah. with google ads obviously they're searching for something in particular or they're looking for things so if you know that someone's looking for something particular you can put money behind it in terms of a google ad but facebook ad is very very different they don't might not necessarily uh know that they need your thing yet or they might not necessarily know that they want to be part of your community yet but by exactly. showing showing yeah. them uh that that content then they have a, a higher chance of following you or signing up or buying eventually as well love that definitely, so much definitely yeah now you've you've been in the the business for so many years Bianca do you have any like what's your secret how can we actually prevent ourselves from wasting money on ads that are just not going to work have you got some top tips for us well, to have your foundations in place for yes. starters. So stay away from the boost button is my first tip because um, <laughs> it's just too easy and people go in with, dive into it without a strategy. They literally kind of just, oh, I'm going to put some money behind this and see what it does. And then they're disappointed that they didn't get more sales. Well, often that's not even what you're boosting for. Like you might be boosting to get it seen by more people. Well, you've reached that objective because Facebook will do what you tell it to do pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you need to have your foundations in place and you need to think about you need to think about that client journey that you talk about a lot as well. So, you know, you know, in a way, how are people going to find me? Then what's the next step? Then what's the next step? Then what's the next step? And Facebook ads is exactly like that. Sometimes you might be, you know, skipping a few steps and that's okay. Like if you're going from in, rather than that warm up sort of those warm up ads by showing, by, by amplifying your organic content, you can skip and literally go to a, okay, I want people to sign up for my lead magnet for like my webinar on or my guide. You can do that. It's just, you need to then think about where in that client journey are they joining you? So you can't assume that they have the same sort of knowledge about mm. you as the people that have gone through that organic so those organic steps so that means that you have a have to have a really good nurture sequence rather than dumping them in with all the other people that already know about you 
Um, so it literally it comes down to having your client journey mapped out and to figure out where people are in that client journey and where you're going to put money behind that amplification. And yes, list building, lead generation is super important. Um, another thing on that note <laughs> is when you get people on your list, don't be disheartened if they don't buy this round. They may need two or three rounds to warm up to you to figure out what you're about before they are ready to buy. And this is why I tell everyone who has a funnel, track when people join to when they purchase. Everyone will be different, but like have a look at where there is there is a trend. You might see that some people, you know, need three, four, five months before they purchase from you. They need like that more sort of nurturing like numbers are so important in this game (laughs) that like yes more eyeballs more leads equals more sales but there's a whole process in between us and a lot of people who launch and it's like an absolute bugbear of mine it's like well we got this many leads and but we got this many sales I'm like yeah but you got this many leads there's still all those leads it doesn't mean that they will never convert it's like and this is the thing it's like you might have gotten so many leads now and not as many sales as you wanted but keep nurturing those people it's it you can't look at a single launch and a single lead generation period as like an isolated task it's like they're people (laughs) not just numbers like I know I talk about numbers a lot but they're people (laughs) oh my goodness yes they are yes yeah (laughs) (laughs) so they may convert later so yeah it's like don't give up (laughs) if your first launch is you know not as you want it oh my goodness I love those so make sure the foundations are in place Think about the entire journey and make sure that you continue to nurture. And I talk about this a lot as well, Bianca, because I think that people think that, you know, as soon as they sign, someone signs up for their lead magnet, then the sales funnel that comes after it, that, that if they don't buy, then, you know, it's it's a, it's a done deal. They're never going to buy. But I really encourage people to think about that nurturing process and that number three, numbers are important, but there are humans at the other yes. end of every piece of content you create, including Facebook ads. So make sure that you think about that as well. Oh my goodness. I love those so much. Now, Bianca, I know that people will want to know now where on earth they can get some more advice and learnings around Facebook ads. And I know that you have a beautiful bundle that um, you can share with my listeners as well. Yes, I do. I do have um, my Facebook ads bundle. I also just, uh, and this is was done after I replied for your podcast. Um, I have a new masterclass as well. So that's another one. Um, it's actually Bianca McKenzie forward, com forward slash masterclass. And that is all about how to build a wait list of clients with Facebook and Instagram ads. So I have a lot of like really good tools. Like I have like my little prep school, which is like $9 and it tells you all the things you need to do before you spend money on Facebook. So yeah, um, I'm like, you can probably hear I'm so passionate about this because I hate people wasting money on Facebook ads. And I also don't like it when people get sad or annoyed or angry because Facebook ads didn't work. It's like they work, (laughs) but it's not the Facebook ads, it might be their funnel. So yeah, anyway. (laughs) And I can definitely hear that passion in in your voice. And I know that you are very passionate about the fact that, you know, Facebook ads can work and they do work, but you just need to have the strategy behind it. And um, yeah, wasting money on Facebook ads is not fun. So if anyone, if anyone (laughs) can, can save some money, then that's a good thing. Now, Bianca, before we finish up, I always love to ask my guests about their superpowers because I'm all about women in particular owning and using their superpowers. So what would you say is your superpower? So it's such a hard question. I think like I've got a lot of powers. So. Awesome. Um, <laughs> I love hearing that. I love it. I think one of my superpowers is that I can simplify things like even though marketing might be this big scary hairy beast for a lot of people I I feel like my superpower is to simplify the marketing and the tech so it's not as hard and as daunting because I don't I don't do fluff yes there are 50 million ways to do you know xyz (laughs) I'm like let's just pick one and do it um so yeah I think one of my superpowers is to simplify marketing and technology 
Yeah, and I would 100% agree with that, Bianca. I must say that when I first kind of started learning or thinking about Facebook ads, your podcast was the absolute go-to for me. And it was it was definitely simplified because I had all of these amazing aha moments. And I will make sure that actually I put the link to Bianca's podcast in the show notes as well. So make sure you go and check out that as well as her Facebook ad success bundle and all of the amazing um, Facebook ads resources she has available. Before we finish, do you have any final parting words of wisdom, Bianca? Apart from stay away from the boost button? Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I do actually. So the other thing is Facebook ads, like any marketing tactic, should be a long term game. Like there is no there is no absolute quick fix. Marketing is a long term journey. Even though even those people that you see pop up as you know, you feel like they've come out of nowhere, they have a journey before them. And a marketing journey is there is there are no shortcuts. That is my final <laughs> wisdom <laughs> and no <it's>, shortcuts <laughs> yeah, I love that absolutely brilliant way to end the, the episode so thank you so much for coming on the podcast today and sharing your wisdom with my listeners Bianca I truly appreciate you being here thank you so much thanks so much for listening that's it for another week to get more powerful content in your life make sure you're following along on socials my handle is at meld business and just in case you're wondering, the groovy music for this podcast was created by Just Here on SoundCloud. I'd also be super grateful if you took a moment to rate and review this podcast so more amazing women like you can experience the power of content. And if you're like, hell Mel, stop talking. I'm ready to work with you now. Here's how we can work some powerful content magic together. Firstly, come and join the content effect, my membership inspiring women with service-based businesses to ditch the content chaos and start creating standout content that gets you noticed and makes sales. You can join us by using the link in the show notes or just Google the content effect. The second way we can work together is via my one-on-one -on -one packages. We can create a sustainable content strategy or start to build out your client journey. It's up to you. Pop on over to meldbusinessservices.com.au forward slash services to find out more. Until next time, have a beautiful week and embrace the power of your content.